growing up in Barbados, regardless of how poor you are, you saw black lawyers, black doctors, black politicians, black dentists. You saw people that look like you. You could aspire to be anything you wanted to be. Hi, I am Juliet Daniel. I am from Barbados and this is my journey in Canada. I arrived in Canada in August of 1983. I'd never lived away from home. I had never coped by myself. As scared as I was, I took the plunge. I came to Queens initially to basically be a medical student like most students back then. 1986, the fall of 1986 into Christmas was actually a pretty rough year for me. My next door neighbor in Barbados died from breast cancer. And a month after that, my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. That was the first semester of my fourth year at Queens, my final year at Queens. When my neighbor first died from breast cancer and then my mom was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and succumbed to ovarian cancer, I didn't want to step foot in a hospital. So that was part of the decision not to become a physician because I felt like the physicians, they couldn't save my mom, they couldn't save my neighbor. I wanted to do more applied research where I felt like it would really have an impact on human cancers. I chose to go to Memphis, Tennessee, even though it was in the Deep South and with the history of the Deep South. And it was there at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis that I cloned and discovered the gene. And I named it Kaizo after my favorite Calypso music because I wanted to give the gene a name that was representative of my Caribbean heritage and recognizing that after eight years in academia and research, I was barely seeing any black scientists far less black female scientists, far less black Caribbean scientists. And so I wanted to give the gene a name that would, in a subtle way, hint to people that whoever named this gene was from the Caribbean. I discovered and cloned Kaizo in 1999 and joined McMaster pretty soon after that. In 2012, that's when we realized that Kaizo was very highly expressed in cancer cells. Part of our project as well, our research at McMaster, is we're studying a breast cancer subtype called triple negative breast cancer or TNBC. And TNBC disproportionately affects black, young black women, young premenopausal black women. So it affects them before they even have their first mammogram. So we've been studying that and lobbying and advocating for more research funds to be de designated for this. In 2020, in response to the horrific killing of George Floyd, myself and about four other black professors across Canada co-founded the Canadian Black Scientists Network, even though we're a few in number, but we want to showcase the excellent research that we're all doing in different spheres and fields across Canada. In 2020, the African Caribbean Faculty Association of McMaster, or ACFAM, we wrote about seven or eight of the black professors at McMaster, we wrote a white, a white paper called black, um, black Excellence in Academia with nine specific recommendations that we wanted McMaster University to implement at the university to address anti-black racism. And I'm proud to say that they have implemented or addressed all nine of our recommendations. I think the benefit that McMaster has is we established the African Caribbean Faculty Association 12 years ago. We were small in number, we didn't have that many black professors. We could at least, we actually had meals and dinners, we, we socialized as well, so we became friends. And I think that's the difference between or association of black faculty compared to some of the other universities where they did not have a caucus together. So when George Floyd was killed, it was tough to like coalesce, whereas we already had a group of, of black faculty that were meeting on a regular basis, that were mentoring our black students on a mentoring on a regular basis. For the past 21 years, I've been the only black female scientist at McMaster. And it's 21 years, we really need more black scientists in general not just at McMaster, but across Canada, we just don't have enough. Kids in Canada, they don't see that representation of black lawyers, black doctors. And so that I think is a huge part of the challenge for, for young black Canadians born in Canada. I really hope that 2022, we see a real uplifting and rise of more black professionals in all professions, so that our young children in the high schools and the elementary schools can see that. I want them to aspire to more than just those traditional 
buckets or baskets that black success has been, you know, categorized into.